Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now, as you may have noticed, I've purchased a second-hand Asus ROG gaming PC from nowhere other than CEX here in the UK. Of course, I paid £365, which I think is somewhere around $400. US dollars. Um, I'll have the exact price up here somewhere. And what I thought we'd do is unbox this thing, see what we got, see what sort of condition this machine is in, and of course, check out the specs that we got for our money today. My first impressions are good. This Asus ROG G15DH came in its original box with cables and paperwork. This isn't a guarantee that the PC was well looked after, but speaking from experience, I usually find this to be more likely. We even got the original protective cover that the system was wrapped in too. Say what you want about pre-builds, but there's no denying that this one looks great on the outside. The all black design is sleek and stylish, and this specific unit doesn't have much in the way of marks and scratches. There are a few little blemishes here and there, but for what I believe is a three-year-old computer, it's clearly spent most of, if not all of its time, on top of or underneath a desk without being tampered with. I doubt if this thing has even been opened up. That is of course about to change. Time to see if I got what I paid for here and whether or not this Asus PC is just as clean on the inside as it is on the outside. Now that is a great sight to be greeted with. I can see straight away that this is a Radeon 5700 XT reference model, a high-end card from 2019 that really went crazy in price during the shortage. Used prices got to the point where you could sell one for more than the 6700 XT was going for new and essentially upgrade for nothing. Prices have fallen again, but this card is still solid and should offer similar performance to that of a modern NVIDIA 3060. Okay, look, I know you've noticed the main issue here. I have too. I can't ignore it anymore. We have a single stick of DDR4 inside this system, which is probably going to play havoc with our upcoming gaming results. But I bought it like this, so I'll test it like this. Upgrades will follow in a different video for sure. Not only is it a single stick, but it's a single 8GB stick. It is clocked at 3200MHz though, so it's not all bad. The processor remains unconfirmed for now, and so does the motherboard model, but booting it up very shortly will reveal all. I can also see an M2 SSD in the slot as well as a PCIe Wi-Fi card with an extra 1TB of storage in the form of a traditional hard disk drive around the back. This is removed by unscrewing it from the bottom of the case, not conventional or the most practical, but at least there is still room for an HDD even if it does seem like a bit of an afterthought. I'd be inclined to remove it and just get a larger M2 SSD drive to be honest if budget allows. The cable management around here is pretty good, with the presumably 500 watt power supply being hidden away under a separate piece of metal and not visible from the front. Overall, I'm fairly happy. I had a feeling the RAM would be single channel, I mean it usually is with pre built but at least there's a spare slot to upgrade. Condition wise, the PC is really nice overall as well, but I don't want to take anything out of here and start cleaning it up until we've confirmed that it works, which we must do now. Always test a second hand machine or individual component before attempting any cleanup or repasting. Here we go then. Let's boot it up for the first time. I quite like the touch of RGB at the front. Not usually my thing, but it's quite subtle and isn't too bright. The PC seems to be working okay and is firing straight up into Windows 11 or the Windows 11 setup. Nice to see it's been restored to factory settings, though saying that I think this must have shipped with Windows 10 when it was new, so it has been upgraded at some point. I quite like Windows 11 these days, so it's no big deal, and in fact it's quite a nice surprise. It saves me doing it. I'll set this up later, but I'm going to hook my SSD up to it now to save reinstalling my games. Now before I tested anything, I wanted to have a quick look in the BIOS to confirm the specs. We have the Ryzen 5 3600X, and what appears to be a custom motherboard specifically designed for this system. It is a B450 Micro ATX board, and I have no idea what else it supports, but 5000 series chips should be on the list, right? I want to talk about noise now.
The main cause of this noise isn't the CPU or GPU fan, it's actually the rear fan. Don't try this at home, but I'll show you. We can change the profile in the BIOS, but it makes no difference. I'll be swapping this out too on my quest for silence, I think. I'll be documenting my changes to this machine at some point, but let's see what it is capable of as is and out of the box. The 6 core 12 thread Ryzen 5 3600X is still pretty quick, and as expected, it sits right between the standard 3600 and Intel i5 11400. It's a solid choice for a modern and lower cost build, but I'd actually recommend getting the non X chip if prices are significantly different where you live. Performance isn't really that much different. Gaming now, and if I didn't know any better, I'd say we were about to take to the skies. I can picture this thing taxiing down a runway with these noise levels. The GPU and CPU fan noise is overshadowed by the chassis fan, of course, wouldn't want anything stealing that thing's thunder, quite literally. In our first game, Cyberpunk, it's fair to say we are starved of RAM as expected, and with a single module there is a lot of room for improvement, but it's not that bad. I'd say the 3600X and 5700XT are a really good pairing, even today, and I do like this combo, personally. I had a 5700 that I flashed to an XT back in the day, and it ran very warm and noisy, but I do miss it. I wanted to sell this one on, but maybe I'll keep it. I don't know why, but I just can't sell anything. I think to myself, oh, that'll make a nice profit, and then I end up keeping it. Yes, sorry I couldn't pay the mortgage this month, Mr. Bank Manager, but I got all sentimental about a jet engine simulating graphics card from 2019. Anyway, 8 gigs of single channel RAM really isn't as bad as I thought, at least not as we move into Red Dead. I'll probably eat those words in about 2 seconds, but at the moment this system is doing okay, and here with ultra textures and everything else at medium, I'm having a pretty good time, and seeing some great performance figures across the board. There was far less stutter in Valentine than I thought too, which is always a bonus, and the game looks fantastic. A great result. Yeah, so you know I said about eating my words, well Spider-Man is a good example of where 8 gigs of RAM isn't going to cut it, not in single channel mode anyway. This is easily remedied and will be hopefully resolved when I upgrade this machine, as the RAM is clearly the bottleneck. I'm not sure if this PC was available with 16 gigs, but if it was, I do hope that dual channel memory was used. I'm not really sure why manufacturers go with single modules to be honest, as it can limit otherwise really good specs. You wouldn't know, apart from the multitude of system memory warnings, that Forza Horizon 5 was running with limited RAM. Here with the high preset it looks good and runs great. The 5700 XT is getting a little bit warm, but this is nothing unusual, and it could probably do with a bit of a dust and repaste. These temperatures won't be impacting performance. The CPU on the other hand is remaining a lot cooler with the stock, well, stock but aftermarket cooler, I guess you could call it, and any noise is once again being drowned out by the system fan, which could substitute the audio effects of the McLaren I'm driving here, to be honest. To finalise on the gameplay for now, we have Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 at the Ultra preset, which ran fine, again with just 8 gigs in the PC. More would definitely help, but we are still getting playable figures. How things change when we upgrade this machine? Well, we'll have to see, but I think this system is a good starting point for even the most modern of gaming tasks. You could potentially build a PC from scratch just as good or better for the same price as this, especially when you work out the equivalent cost in other currencies, but something about pre-builts like this one I don't know, they just really take my interest. In the next one we'll probably look at the CPU or the reference 5700 XT on its own to discover its full modern day potential, but for now, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Let me know what you think of this PC down in the comments and what upgrades you would make. Hopefully then, I'll see all of you in the next video.